Today, I'm flying Air Canada Business Class on their 787 Dreamliner. And, well, it's fair to say we have a history. Back in June, I flew on board this very plane on a red-eye business class flight, which was frankly awful. I was threatened, made to feel incredibly uncomfortable, and what's more, the premium product provided was poor. For example, no bedding provided, no booze, plastic cutlery used, and bizarrely served breakfast at midnight. What's more, on my connecting flight, they knew I was coming, so they rolled out the red carpet for me. I got the full Sam ch I mean, uh, PR experience. Well, today, I'm going to give them a surprise visit. But before we begin, I just wanted to thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video. So, for context, Air Canada have no idea that I'm coming today. Let's catch them off guard and see if they've actually improved. Of course, I run the risk of more issues with filming and potential threats, but hey, I'm here to show you guys the real unfiltered flying experience. Now I'm actually able to enter Canada this time. I'm starting my journey on the ground at Toronto Pearson International Airport otherwise known as YYZ. Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. Pretty apprehensive about this considering my previous experience. Let's head straight over now into Terminal 1 and get checked in. So we are check-in at number two. Oh, hang on a second. I see that there is a priority channel over here. Let's go find this out. This looks more promising. It's basically just a separate area to go and check in. There is a Aeroplan Super Elite section that you can go through and of course that lovely branding just there. I've got no bags to check in. Right, so all checked in, nice and smooth, no issues whatsoever, which is what we like to see. What I love though is this. Check it out. Now this is the exact plane that I'm actually, is it? Let's see. No, it's not actually, this is the Dash 8. So we're going to be flying the Dash 9, but this is in essence similar to what we're going to be flying today which actually has just got in from a 14 hour flight from Doha which I believe is actually a little bit late in fact I think it only arrives in about an hour's time but anyway let's go through now and go and check out what lounges we have on offer today a few minutes later right then all through security I must say it's a lot less chaotic in Canada than it is in the US you don't have to take your shoes off etc but still, all through, not too many problems. It's good to have that priority. That's a nice touch. I like that. So, uh, <laughs> so far, we've got a bit of a thumbs up. This is an improvement over last time. Obviously, we are doing the 6 p.m. Where is it? 6 p.m. Vancouver AC123 D24 gate. Obviously, we've got plenty and plenty of time. First up, we've got the Air Canada Cafe. Is it open? That's the question. No, it's not. It's closed. Or is it? Temporarily closed for the notice. Not so good to begin with. Let's hope that there is something that is open. Wind on 10 minutes of wandering the terminal, it's fair to say I'm all but a little confused. <sighs> Guys, this is going to sound ridiculous, but I still cannot find the lounge. I, I don't know what I'm doing wrong here, but I have gone from one side of the terminal to the other. <laughs> the only thing I can possibly think is that it's up here and I missed it when I went straight out of security. If that is the case though, I wouldn't say it's particularly well signposted, but unbelievable. It really is over here. See? Maple Leaf Lounge. For goodness sake. Oh, finally, right. Lift with the largest buttons I've ever seen. Goodness me, what a, uh, <laughs> what a shambles. It's not very well signposted, I will say that in my defence. Here we go. Right, so nice and straightforward. Uh, you do need to, as you've probably just heard, uh, confirm that you've been vaccinated, but that's like everywhere in Canada, it's not just the lounge. Right, anyway, let's go sit down, see what they've got for food, and relax. I think there's some good views of the runway as well. I've noticed that you can scan the QR code just here. And they appear to have some form of table service. So let's see whether it rivals British Airways. Okay, I'm back up again. Unfortunately, it seems that the app just does some hot food. And it doesn't do drinks, which, I don't know, I feel that's a bit silly because it kind of defeats the whole point of doing it in the first place. People are gonna to want to have something to drink with their meal. So uh, yeah, anyway, let's go in there, get a nice DC on the go. 
well I've uh, relocated it is pretty busy in here but I found somewhere by the window which is a little bit nicer a bit more out of the way so uh, yeah let's crack on so what did I order from the mobile menu I went firstly for the saffron and cauliflower soup which whilst does not look good at all was absolutely delicious next I went for the buffalo chicken taco again not the most eloquently presented but was super tasty all in all, up there are some of the better business class lounge offerings I've experienced throughout the pandemic. Right, after a good sort of uh, couple of hours in the lounge, it's now time to head over to... I didn't quite expect it to be so busy leaving the lounge and I had to queue for five or so minutes. I guess lots got carried away also with those tacos. That was absolute chaos. I don't know what it is, but Air Canada have organised their lounge so that there are just two elevators for a totally packed experience. Anyway, let's go now over to the gate. And just before we get on board, here's a quick word from today's video sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace make it super easy for you to set up and host a website. This isn't the 1990s where you have to know complicated coding. Squarespace really have this down, handling it all from the domain name through to the design, hosting, social media linking, and even your search engine optimization. The best bit is Squarespace are offering you a free trial and 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Just head over to squarespace.com forward slash Trek Trendy and use the coupon code Trek Trendy. Thanks again Squarespace for making this video possible. Goodness me, it's all suddenly, do you know what, I don't know about you guys, but sometimes when you get settled into the lounge, goodness me, I'm going to get run over. When you get settled into the lounge and you're relaxing and time just flies by, before you know it, you're almost pretty late for the flight. I need not have worried too much because it looks like the gate is still very much not boarding. Uh, I only went by the app and it said that the boarding was already starting and it hasn't, so plenty of time. Given I've got a few minutes, let's go check out today's gorgeous 787, which, well, clearly identifies as an A350. Wonderful, how about you? Thank you, appreciate it. Right, let's go get on board. I'm pretty excited about this. Remember the last time that I was boarding a Dreamliner of the exact same aircraft as today, actually. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to compare the experiences on a slightly longer flight as well. So with that said, let's jump on board. I'm politely welcomed on board by a member of Friendly Cabin Crew. I can't help notice how fresh this cabin looks. Hard product wise, it's decent. After stowing my bag in the overhead bin, I'm promptly presented with a menu card for tonight's flight. To my surprise, the FA is totally cool with my camera and genuinely seems interested in what I'm doing. Have I got on board the wrong flight here? I'm surprised it actually sticks. Yeah, it's really, it's really strong. I, yeah. With the first hurdle, well, being able to film today out of the way, let's settle into my seat, 7 Alpha. I'm shocked but happy to find bedding has been placed next to my pod. Remember, nothing was provided on my previous red eye flight. Now, frustratingly, there's a delay this evening. Some issues apparently with cargo being loaded into the hold. So I'm actually treated to several loud phone calls from matey boy behind me. Yeah, 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 Dan, the two of us, and let's maybe do breakfast with that. FML. Finally, it appears the cargo issues are rectified, so we begin to push back. I put my seatbelt on and the safety video is screened. It's great to see Toronto Airport busier again, with a steady stream of flights arriving and departing. As we hurtle down the runway and into the last of the Canadian evening sunlight, you may not yet have guessed where we're going. Vancouver, of course. Flight time will be around five hours, covering some two and a half thousand miles. As we begin to level out, let's take a look at tonight's menu. Thankfully, no nighttime breakfast. The options look solid. And what's more, booze is back. There's a modest wine list provided, along with a variety of hard liquor. I'm actually not drinking this evening, so went for my favourite DC, served in proper glassware to boot. Bear in mind other North American carriers are still wheeling out plastic cups in both business and first. I'm also served a bag of mixed nuts, which go down brilliantly. It's not long before dinner service kicks into full swing. My tray table retracts from just under the TV and promptly the FA places my food down in front of me. No tablecloths are provided, but there is an improvement here. Metal cutlery finally. No more plastic sporks, thank goodness. So, my food. I begin with the smoked salmon, which tasted fresh and, well, like the sea. This is complemented by a plastic wrapped bread roll, which is actually not like a rock for once. 
Next, I tuck into the side salad, which came with this cute little olive oil and balsamic oil dressing. It tasted, well, like a salad. As I smash back another sip of my DC, it's time for the main event, beef tenderloin with potatoes, greens, and a demi-glaze sauce. It was fabulous. Next, my favorite course, dessert. A few options here, so I went for the caramel brownie, which was incredible and just had to be eaten with your hands. To finish, I went for the fresh fruit plate. Now, I can honestly say this dinner was up there with some of the best. Air Canada, you've smashed it out the park here. Solid work and credit where credit is due. Now let's head over to the bathroom for a loo review. As noted before on Air Canada, their 787 bathrooms are fab. I love the maple leaf pattern on the wall. It's great to see an airline which makes the effort to personalize their bathrooms. Oh, and the best bit, this is a loo with a view. There are Vitruvi amenities provided, the highlight being the facial mist, though the hand soap smell amazing. Right, all fresh, let's get back over to my seat and make it up into a bed. Bedding comes pre-packed with a fluffy pillow, mattress topper and comfy duvet. I can honestly say this is one of the better bedding setups provided on board business class and whilst I only used it for a nap today, I slept wonderfully. Another tick in the box here AC and a world away from my red eye flight back in June with zero bedding. Many hours later. Before I know it, we're on final approach and coming into Vancouver to land. I can honestly say Air Canada drastically surpassed my expectations today. They had no idea I was coming, so I'm able to showcase this through the lens of just a regular passenger. They provided a world-class premium experience, which is worlds away from their previous awful flight. I wouldn't hesitate to fly them again, though I will certainly watch out for any overzealous FAs in future. Right guys, welcome to Vancouver. That was a, uh, a really good flight actually. I was thoroughly impressed. It's genuinely been really refreshing to see for once when an airline fully recovers and actually does a really good job. Anyway, thanks very much for watching guys and I'll catch you all again next week. Thanks once again to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash Trek Trendy to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain.